Is it worth hacking some of the devices? The short answer is yes. And the long answer, it's gonna be after the intro. Hi, I'm Matt and this is Not Enough Tech. I've got these. These are some of basic devices and been sent to me by Banggood. Thanks. Now, one of the units is hacked, and that's the hack unit, and one of the units isn't, and runs the just a box standard firmware. Now, I'm trying to answer the question whether you actually play and um, with the custom firmware uh, on, on the Son of Basics, or all the Son of Devices, and uh, you probably know my short answer, so let me just explain a little bit more about why you should um, hack one of these. First of all, if you're buying a sum of devices, you're already willing to cut the cord because that's what's required to make one of these babies work. You have to cut the cord in half, connect it to one half to a power, the other half to a device, and basically this is the premise of the ESP8266 um, controller. Now, let's talk about uh, hacking it and why you should hack it. First of all, you can back it up. So you can download the firmware onto a file Save the file in a safe location because each file corresponds with a single device, so you cannot cross back up the devices. And you can restore it at any given time. So if you make any mistakes, or if you, for some reason, for hacking isn't for you, um, well, are you ready to flash the original firmware and you can continue using um, the device in an intended way. Now, since you're willing to cut the cord, uh, my assumption is that uh, uh, you are happy to hack it, otherwise you would buy a smart bulb or a smart socket, a consumer-ready product uh, that uh, does not require any cord cutting. Uh, so, if you're willing to uh, play with the device, there are a number of advantages. And the advantages are, first of all, you can connect anything to it. So I'm gonna show you in a showcase that you can connect keyboard, mobile, uh, voice control like smart speakers etc and the exposed pins you can add the uh, temperature reader and base the switching on the temperature it's good very good for blinds and stuff like that um, another thing is you are gonna reduce the crosstalk so uh, the device is not going to uh, talk home as much as uh, through the provided app uh, your functionality of uh, uh, Wi-Fi or LAN is going to be much greater, something that uh, I was always missing on these devices. So once your uh, internet goes down, basically these often very, uh, very often don't work. And um, another thing is um, you have a greater control. Uh, so you can decide how the device is going to behave, etc. Now, with greater control comes a great responsibility and uh, you have to maintain the security. So that's one of the disadvantages. Poor coding practices may lead to exposing a device uh, for hacking. Uh, another disadvantage is, is by default, uh, this device is supported by Alexa and uh, Google Home. So if you're gonna hack it, you're gonna lose that uh, functionality. So you can you have to recreate it in some ways. You can do it with uh, Node-RED fairly easy, so that's not a big issue. Uh, you're gonna lose the warranty as well, but you can, in technically, you could reflash it and, uh, you know, as long as, uh, uh, you are careful, you could in theory return it, but be, be fair with these, these are only like five dollars, so it's not worth actually going through the process of returning. And uh, do I have any other disadvantages? Well, you could destroy one in the process as well, however, uh, these are only five dollars, it's not that much. They're actually on sale, so I'm gonna link um, the shopping link for you, it's affiliated link as well, so I'm going to get a small kit back. So if you want one of the Sonos basic devices and want to play with them, go ahead. Now I'm just going to show you functionality, so it's a short um, showcase showing you how it works, the hacked unit versus the normal unit, and so you could have an idea what you could do. Bear in mind the code isn't very refined, it's just a very quick code I've adapted from one of my previous tutorials and you can have much better structure of the code and more functionality added into a single device itself because it has a microcomputer in it so it's capable of doing a lot of stuff uh, on its own and in this case I'm just using it as a dumb relay, uh, internet relay connected via MQTT. So let's jump into a showcase. Alexa, turn the lamp on. Okay.
Alexa, turn the lamp off. Okay. Alexa, turn the lamp to off. Okay. Hey Google, turn the lamp to on. Okay, turning on the lamp too. Now, before we start hacking one of these, uh, word of warning. First of all, make a backup. And I know I've said that before, but backup is available for every single device. So uh, you have to make sure each device has its own backup because it's based on your Mac ID and uh, you cannot share the backups between different sort of devices. So that's the first thing. Second of all, I'm going to show you how to make a backup anyway. Second of all, you are playing with uh, mains sometimes, so make sure you know you are safe. For programming, do not connect main electricity. So we're gonna feed the power through programmer to the ESP. You don't need to connect the main electricity to the unit. This is dangerous, don't do it. Let's start hacking. To start, we're gonna take the son of apart and add at least four pins. There are five pins, I'm gonna add five pins because one of them is a free GPIO 14. So just to wrap things in security tape and uh, just solder the pins to the board. And once jobs is done, we can have a look. This is the layout. Now it's time to connect that to my uh, programmer. There is some setting up to do on Windows. First, install the Python 2.7. And when it's installed, open PowerShell by pressing Shift and right click. Now it's working here, but to make it easier for us, we just need to set a new path. So open the system and then go to uh, one of these system protection or remote settings, that's fine. And then go to Advanced tab and Environmental uh, Variables and look for Path and add the new path, which is Path of the Python, and by default is C. Uh, and then fold the Python uh, 27. Let's install the pip now. So go to the folder where the f location of the file is and type Python and then uh, get dash pip that uh, py and that's going to be installed for you automatically. It's time to do the same with the Python uh, py serial. So navigate to folder, open PowerShell and just type in uh, Python setup install. When this is installed, uh, you can go to ASP tool folder where the ASP um, Python script is and we can uh, do everything there. So let's start by checking what port the program is connected to. So go to device manager, com port and check which port is it. For me it's port 11. To put the son of into a flash mode, all you have to do is just to power, uh, power it off, press the bottom, uh, button down and then power it on while holding down the button that's going to put it in a flash mode once this is done we can start backing up so there is a, a special function for that and uh, i'm going to link it in the description in the article so you don't have to type it online uh, but it's visible on the screen but when the backup is done you'll see a new file in this case i have named it son of one bin and back up this file as this contains the image of your son of firmware and it's uh, compatible only with a single device. To erase, a uh, similar procedure, just uh, put the son of in the flash, type in the command, make sure the port is correct, and uh, uh, you can erase the flash within a few seconds. Once the flash is erased, you can put any other software. Before we're gonna jump into that, I'm gonna show you quickly how to restore it. So the same, just uh, put the file uh, with your image into the the ESP tool folder and then just run this command uh, changing the port name and the file name uh, for restoration and you will be able to restore your uh, image. Make sure your Arduino ID is correctly set up for and this so we have to Set up correct board, which in this case is a uh, Genic ESP8266 module. Uh, flash mode D out. Select flash size, uh, one mic no spiffs. Then uh, 
1.4 higher bandwidth and a rest last only sketch and the correct uh, port. Now once this is done, I have uh, two files in here to push. One is secure, which is just to set up and ask you for your SSID, your password, your server and your client name for the MQTT. And uh, I'm recycling the code used for my ESP relay, uh, for my ESP smart socket I've, I've done, but you can improve on that. Uh, the changes I've made was uh, different topics, so I can recycle the code for the node red as well. And uh, obviously the pin, which in this case Sonoff has uh, controls over the relay on the pin 12, so GPIO 12. And that's pretty much all the changes you have to make. Once this is done, just compile the code and upload it. And before you upload, obviously just power down the Sonoff, hold down the button, power up and hold, while holding the button for two, three seconds, and then you can push the uh, code the upload. In my opinion, it is worth hacking one of these and it takes moments. Uh, you can refine the code, you can get an example from GitHub, you can find other places, you can write your own. Just do it, it's fun. Uh, if you want to grab one of these, it's in the description. Also, the code itself and a little bit more information about uh, connecting these, um, you'll find in the article attached to the video. So uh, take a look and uh, read some more information about it. Uh, there are links to buy one of these and give me a small kickback. And also, just follow me on social media. You know how to do it. You know how YouTube works. And if you want to get notified, you know what to do. So. Uh, I'll leave you to it and I'll leave you with a few extra videos at the end with the cards and I guess I'm gonna see you in the next video. Take care. Bye. First of all... Ah! <laughs> ah. Okay, blooper sorted. Oh.